So in a 2006 episode of The Simpsons called Money Bart, there was this little snapshot you could have seen had you paused the video long enough to see it and zoomed in. E to the i pi plus one equals zero was just an amazing equation. Now to understand that and to get there a little bit, we're gonna have to understand some things about complex numbers and the way we write them in polar form reflects uh, some work done by a mathematician by the name of Leonard Euler. Now, just as kind of like an intro example here real quick, it says find the complex conjugate of a given number. I'm not sure that's notation or something that I really discussed in earnest. So let me just remind you, in case it's been a while since you've seen a complex number and its conjugate, what that's all about. So if you have a number like five plus three i, that's your complex number. The conjugate is five minus three i. Basically, you're just changing the sign from positive to negative. Or if you had say six minus two i, then the conjugate, any guesses? What would the conjugate be? Six, six plus two i. Six plus two i. Now, the conjugate comes up a lot because of the nature of working with complex numbers. Back in algebra, if you were to multiply a number and its conjugate, five plus three i times five minus three i, I guess the one thing that I would suggest that you remember very carefully is this, i squared. Does anyone know what i squared equals? One. One. Oh, negative one. That's what makes i so special. Because when you take the square root of both sides, you get that i equals the square root of negative one. That's something that plagued mathematicians for centuries. They didn't know how to deal with this effectively. And when people started playing with it, it got this name that we still use today because they didn't believe it. They said, oh, it's ridiculous, it's imaginary, and the name stuck. Now, i squared is negative one. Let me foil this out. 25 minus 15i plus 15i. And then if you're careful, it's a minus nine i squared. Now, bam, bam, those drop out. And something special happens here. You get 25 minus nine times negative one, right? I squared is negative one. So 25 plus nine is 34. Wow, you started out with two complex numbers and you ended up with a real number, all right? There's no complex part or imaginary part. If you wanted to, you could think of it as having an imaginary part of zero, but most times people just think of it as a real number. All right, now that's old school. What Leonard Euler did and other pioneers did is they started writing complex numbers in different ways. So that's what we're gonna work on, the polar form of a complex number. So let's take a look at three minus four i. Uh, actually, you know what? Um, we'll do this one because it doesn't work out quite as nice and you are gonna run into some that don't work out quite as nice. So we've got negative seven plus nine i, negative seven plus nine i, and we wanna write that in polar form and in exponential form. Now exponential form is not something I really covered much in our little uh, YouTube video. So definitely pay attention to that. This is kind of like an ordered pair. It's like negative seven comma nine. That's how you have to view and graph this. What quadrant should I draw this in? Second. Second quadrant, excellent, thank you. So I'll draw it in the second quadrant and, and let's see, Oops. something like this. So negative seven plus nine I, negative seven on the real axis, and then nine on the imaginary. 
access. Well, question? Oh, I've confused somebody in the background there already. I feel bad. Hey, all right. That's pretty nice, but let me mute that. Thank you. So what we wanna do is we wanna write this in terms of a radial distance that is an R. So that's gonna be our R. And then this is gonna be theta. So as far as figuring out R is concerned, that's not much different than stuff we did in section 5.1 and 5.2. R is gonna be the square root of negative seven squared plus nine squared. So 49 plus 81, a not very pretty square root of 130. And if you look at the instructions, they ask that you give the radius as a nice exact answer using square roots if necessary. So square root of 130, okay. Now we gotta figure out the angle and You've got a lot of good choices. You can figure out what the sine, cosine, or tangent. Now, personally, I don't know, the, the tangent has some appeal because you don't have to use this crazy square root number. Tangent, remember, is just gonna be negative seven for this side and nine for that side. So the tangent of theta would be nine over negative seven, or theta is gonna be the inverse tangent of negative nine over seven. I would suggest that you put your calculator in degrees as we do that. So let's take a look at it in degrees and I'll just clear out the stuff here. Uh, and I'm in radians, so let me put that in degrees. Inverse tangent of negative nine divided by seven. And wait a minute, I got a negative 52 degrees. What quadrant is negative 52 degrees in? First, second, third, or fourth? Fourth. 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 Yeah, so I'm down here at negative 52 degrees. Well, that doesn't look right because I know my angle is in the second quadrant. How am I going to figure out what that angle is? How can I get that angle? How far do I have to go? What's that? 180. Yeah, it's 180 degrees away, right? So what you could do, and you could subtract 180 and then take the absolute value, or you could just add 180. And either way, you're going to get to that spot. So I'm going to take the, the route of adding 180. And there you go, 127. So theta equals 127 point, call it 87 degrees. Beautiful. So in terms of writing it in polar form, in polar form, it'd be square root of 130 times a cosine of 127.87 plus I times a sine of 127.87. That's it in polar form. So that's nice. Polar. Now there is a form of this called the exponential form. And for the exponential form, we're gonna make use of a relationship from Euler. But before I do that, 
are you okay with how we got the polar representation of this, this number? Make sure that when you input things, you input the radius with a square root if it needs one, and that you round this one carefully. All right, as far as the exponential part of this, let me scroll down a little bit to Euler's formula, and it's right here, and it's beautiful. In fact, if you take me for Calc 2, I will prove where this formula comes from, and it's just so cool. But in the meantime, let's use that. Cosine of theta plus I times the sine of theta can be rewritten as this, e to the I uh, of theta. Actually, that's it's probably a phi, not a theta, but whatever. I'm not quizzing you on your Greek letters. So the exponential form is going to be the radius times e to the i theta, which in our case is the square root of 130. And all of this mess, all of this part right here, gets replaced by e to the i times theta. So e to the i times and I guess I should actually have that in radians, not degrees. Um, so let's let me write that in radians. Um, so I got to convert that to radians. I'll divide by 180 and times by pi. There we go. About 2.23 radians. 2.23. Beautiful. Beautiful. All right, so you've got your exponential form and your polar form. So polar form is just, or exponential form is just a little bit more condensed. It's cramming all that into e to the i theta. How are we looking on those first couple examples there? Doing okay? I didn't get Say again? I didn't, I didn't get, the, get the, exponential form. Form. the exponential form. No, I didn't get the form. Sorry. Um, no, it's okay. So let me go back here with um, theta equals tangent inverse of negative nine over seven. And let's actually find this in radians. Okay. Um, Now in radians, if I put my calculator in radians, uh, and I'm in degrees now, I always seem to be in the wrong unit. Inverse tangent of negative nine divided by seven, and I get negative 0.909, negative 0.909, that's in radians. But unfortunately, I know that's in the wrong quadrant, right? It's going backwards. It's taking me to some angle down in quadrant four, and I want to be up in quadrant two. So it's pointing someplace here. Yeah. I want to be someplace up in the second quadrant. So negative 0.909. I need to figure out what this angle is up here. So what could I add to get from here to here? How much of my chain? How much? Pi, so this is linear. Pi, perfect. So if I add pi, then I get Let's see, plus pi, I get 2.23. So that's my angle in radians. And I can come up with the exponential form or the, the polar form is, let's see, square root of 130 times cosine of 2.23 plus i times a sine of 
All right, so that's that's okay. You're you're okay with the polar form. Yes. But here's here's the thing. E to the i theta is cosine of theta plus i times a sine of theta. Or that's exactly what I've got here. Cosine of theta plus i times a sine of theta. In lining things up, what's theta? What's theta for this example? Two point three. Oh no. Yeah, two point two three. Now that theta here is the same as this theta here. So I can replace this with the square root of 130 times e to the i times 2.23. So it's this expression. These two are interchangeable. So I can interchange that with that. That's what's going on when you're going from polar form to exponential form. You're just condensing this little bit into e to the i theta. It's just a different way to write it. Okay. You're using Euler's identity. He was amazing. The last 17 years of his life, he was blind. And yet he continued to pour out more research and ended up doing more research in math than anybody else in history. He was extremely prodigious. It's amazing. He also had 13 kids along the way. So, wow. Yes. Uh, of course, you could argue that's more work for his wife than it is for him, which is probably true. In any case, <laughs> in any case, um, are you feeling better here, Duraid? Polar and exponential? Yes. Okay. So, Good. so the E can be basically the, the R by E and to the exponential of I theta. Yeah. So basically, the R is still staying here. It's just that this stuff gets replaced by e to the i theta. That's all that's happening. Got it. Thanks. Thank you. Let's do a couple more here. Um, let's focus on these right here. One nice thing about having things in exponential form, which can be polar form, is that it makes it easier to multiply and divide complex numbers it makes it very easy so let me copy down a couple of these angles or these complex numbers seven times cosine of pi over eight plus i times a sine of pi over eight and then you know what just for for giggles let's let w equal 14 times cosine of pi over 10 plus i times a sine of pi over 10. So I'm just changing that up just, just so we have something a little bit different. Uh, pi over 10 plus i times a sine of pi over 10. Now the nice thing about multiplying complex numbers is that all you have to do is multiply the radius, that is the seven and the 14, and then add the angles. In fact, you know what? Let's write this in polar or an exponential form first. That's going to be z, or it's going to be seven e to the i times pi over eight. That's your exponential form of this. So it's a little bit more compact. What would be the exponential form of this one? Fourteen e i to the i value over 10. Perfect. And so when you multiply things together, if I multiply these two things together, let's take a look here. Z times W, let's do it in this form. So it's gonna be seven E I to the pi over eight times 14 
e to the pi i pi over 10. I can rearrange this a little bit. I'm going to rewrite it as 7 times 14, and then e to the i pi over 8 times e to the i pi over 10. And that's looking good. Do you remember when, the, when you multiply things with the same base? When you multiply things with the same base, what happens with their exponents? You add them? You add them. Beautiful. So 7 times 14 is 98. e to the i, I'm just going to factor out the i, I got to do pi over 8 plus pi over 10. And to add those together, it might be helpful to have a common denominator. Common denominator between 8 and 10 is 40. In fact, you know what? I'll make this even easier for you. Um, I'm not going to put in the pi. I know I've got 1 over 8 and 1 over 10. And we'll just kind of factor out the pi. We'll deal with the pi later. We'll do it with pi here. But in order to add 1 over 8 and 1 over 10 without having to do all the work of common denominators, I'm just going to do that on my calculator. 1 divided by 8 plus 1 divided by 10. And I'm being lazy here. I was going to put that in as 0.1. So 1 divided by 8 plus 1 divided by 10. And then you hit the math key and press answer to fraction. There you go, 9 fortieths. You can do a similar thing in decimals. Decimals can give you a fraction for that kind of stuff too. Oh, so, kind of nice. Would it be 9 pi over 40 or just 9 fortieths? So um, I, I factored out the pi like that. So yeah, but you're uh, right. Overall, it'd okay. be nine pi over 40. Um, no, you, I appreciate you checking me. Now, but notice what happened here. All you're doing is you're adding these angles. So you add those angles and you multiply the radius. That's what you're doing when you multiply complex numbers. In fact, we should be able to write this without, um, or without writing it in exponential form. Can anyone tell me what it would be in polar form? Or, yeah, polar form. Well, that's going to be your R. It's going to be 98. First term is cosine of pi nine, over, nine, nine, pi pi nine pi over 40. Plus I sine mm -hmm. pi over 40. There you go. Done. So if you want it in polar form or an exponential form, you got it. It's there for both. Nice. If you were to divide complex numbers, then it turns out that you divide the radius and subtract the, uh, the angles is how you're going to divide. No matter what happens when you divide those things, always keep these angles the same. Don't use any even odd identities on that. Otherwise, it kind of messes with us, messes things up. So, all right, a couple more things here to finish up on in this section. It says write the expression in rectangular form x plus yi uh, and in exponential form r times e to the i theta. So let's work on that one right here. So this is, uh, I'll call it example D just to give it a name. I'm just going to copy this down. 4 cosine of 5 pi over 24 plus i times a sine of 5 pi over 24, all raised to the fourth power. Personally, 
I would start out by writing this as something in exponential form. Can anyone tell me what that's going to be in exponential form? What does this look like? Would it be um Go ahead, Zach. Or e i um I'm trying to, yeah, five pi over 24. Yeah, thank you both. And that's all to the fourth power. So, okay. Now, that's gonna be four to the fourth power and then e to the i five pi over 24 to the fourth power. And I write it like this, just to remind you of what this exponent's gonna do. In fact, it does the same thing here that it did here. Most of us wouldn't take the time to, to remind ourselves that, oh, there's a one here, but there is. And that four multiply the one. In the same way, the four has to multiply this number here. So what happens when I multiply this number here? Well, let's see, four to the fourth power, that's what, 256? I think so, yeah, 16, 256. E to the I, well, what happens when I multiply five pi over 24 times four like that? What do I get? Twenty pi over twenty-four. Um, yeah, that's that's one way to do it. Oh uh, wait, sorry, I just it, can can you simplify anything? Is there anything that'll simplify? Yes, five pi over six. Yeah, so four goes in there once, and in here six times, so you end up with five pi over six. Beautiful, and that's your exponential form. To help us write it in X and Y form or rectangular form, let's first write it in polar form. So instead of E to the I five pi over six, somebody knew, what else would that be? That'd be... Little bit. Sign, Go ahead. Uh, five pi over six plus uh, I sign five pi over six. Awesome, thanks, Pat. Beautiful. And now to finish it up in rectangular. Thanks again, Pat. That was good. Um, in rectangular form, to get it in rectangular form, I'm just going to plug in some numbers here. Cosine of five pi over six. Hopefully you have your, your chart available with you. That's gonna be uh, negative root three over two. All right, so negative square root of three over two. And I times a sine of uh, five pi over six, sine there is gonna be one half. And if you distribute this, the two will cancel with that. It's gonna give me negative 128 square roots of three plus 128i, and that's it in rectangular form. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Okay. How's that one looking? Last one. Last one, I say the best for last, and they want find uh, all the complex fifth roots of negative 10 i. Hmm. Okay, well, a lot going on there. The first thing though that you wanna do if you're asked to find the complex roots of a number is you wanna write it in polar form like this. So cosine of theta plus i times the sine of theta. Let's see if we can't do that for this point here, negative 10i. And instead of dealing with the complex 
fifth roots. Uh, I'll deal with the complex fourth roots. It'd be just one less root to deal with. So find um, the complex fourth roots of negative 10i. Fourth roots of negative 10i. Okay, let's do that. Now, I'm gonna start out by noting that our complex number is negative 10i or better yet, zero minus 10i. That's your real part. That's the imaginary part. If I were to graph this, where would that graph be? Anyone? Uh, yeah, it's gonna be down on the y-axis or in this section, we're gonna call it the imaginary axis. Yeah, but it's gonna be down here. So, effectively at the point zero, negative 10. That's where you would graph it. So I'll put it down here and it should be pretty easy to come up with uh, R and theta. In fact, I'll ask you, what's that distance? What's the value of R here? R equals 10. And I also need the value of theta can someone give me theta in radians? What's that angle that points straight down at 270 uh, degrees? Three pi over two. Three pi over two. Perfect. So in terms of polar form, that's equivalently 10 cosine of three pi over two plus i times the sine of three pi over two. So a little bit of work to get it into this polar form, but it's what you've got to do in order to use the formula that's coming next. So are we okay with that part? Now the formula which is on your handout is this one right here. The nth root, for us that's going to be the fourth root. It's going to be our angle plus 2k pi divided by n. So let's figure out a couple things here. Since we're looking for complex fourth roots, that means n equals 4. OK. n equals 4. That's our theta is three pi over two. So the fourth roots of Z are gonna be the fourth root of 10, which is the fourth root of that. And then the cosine of this angle, three pi over two plus two K pi, all divided by four. Now, once you get this angle down here, just put I times a sine and copy it again over here because it's the same. Three pi over two plus two K pi over four. What this is doing is it's distributing your angles evenly throughout the, the circle of this radius. And I can kind of demonstrate that for you. I'll give you a second to uh, finish copying that down. And if you're interested, I've got a Desmos link that I'll share with you. Uh, let's see. There. Let me put that in the chat. And if you want to open it up, great. If not, 
just follow along here, that's fine too. Okay, so let me cut over to our decimals link. What happens when you find, say, the fourth root of a number, fourth root of a complex number, I should say, is that you're going to get numbers that you can raise to the fourth power that are going to give you your number. Not a big shocker there. But what happens is that they're going to be evenly spaced on a circle surrounding the origin or surrounding the pole, as it would be in this case. Now, the cool thing with this is that you can play around with this. You can move things. And when you move things, you'll see that my angles, or excuse me, the, the values are still evenly spaced. In fact, if I bring this all the way down to the x-axis, you can see that these angles are at 0, 90, 180, 270, and they're all evenly spaced 90 degrees away from each other. As I change this, it changes things up a little bit but they're always gonna be evenly spaced from one another, no matter which way you go. And that's what this formula is doing, is it's evenly spacing things. Now, K is gonna go from zero to N minus one. In our case, N is four, so K goes from zero to three. And I'll just do a couple of these. So we'll call it Z sub zero. is gonna be the fourth root of 10 times a cosine, if k is zero, then this part disappears. And I'll get three pi over two divided by four. So it'd be three pi over eight, plus i times the sine of that same angle, three pi over eight. Now, if you need to, you can get a decimal value approximation from that, that's fine. Uh, what about if k equals one? k equals zero, let's do z sub one. k equals one. That's gonna be the fourth root of 10. And this part's gonna be a bit of a mess. You're gonna have three pi over two plus two times one is just two. Um, plus two pi divided by four. Now let's think about it without all the pi in there. You'll have three halves plus two divided by four. Again, let's take our calculator out, let it rescue us. I'm just gonna do three divided by two plus two, all that's in the numerator, divided by four. And then hit the math key, and get seven eighths, bingo. So, so this is gonna be seven pi over eight. Oops, excuse me, not, I need a cosine in there. There we go. Cosine of seven pi over eight plus I times the sine of seven pi over eight. Now, if you needed exact values for this, like decimal values, you could do that as well. Let me do that here on our graphing calculator so that you can kind of follow along. Uh, let's see, I need to be in radian mode. So let's do that. And I want the fourth root of 10. It's up to you how you want to do the fourth root of 10. You can get the fourth root off the math menu, or you can just do 10 raised to the one divided by four power. Uh, it'd help out if I hit the raise key. So 10 raised, come on, to the one divided by four power exit the exponent, and then cosine of seven pi over eight. And then I wanna repeat that for the sine. 
Now my trick here is I'll hit the second key, then the answer key, no second key, then the enter key. And I'll just go back and instead of a cosine, I'll put the sign. Just click sign, it should type right over it. And there you go. So about negative 1.6429 plus 0 0.6805i. Beautiful. Now you actually have to do two more because you have to do k equals zero, one, two, three, all the way up to n minus one. So um, the next one, if you took your time to do that, z sub two would be the fourth root of 10 times a cosine of 11 pi over eight plus i times a sine of 11 pi over eight. And then the last one, z sub three would be the fourth root of 10 cosine of 15 pi over eight plus i times the sine of 15 pi over eight. Okay, perfect. And you can get as many decimal values as, as a, of there that you need. So, you know, the tough part in using this formula is really turning this into a nice fraction. So let me give you a different option as to how to get a nice fraction out of this. Let's practice this with the third one of these, that is for k equal two. If I put a k equal two in here, let me just ignore the pi stuff for the moment. Let me just come up with a fraction. If I get a k equal two, then two times two is gonna be four plus three over two divided by four. So let me put that into decimals. So I need to use parentheses here, three divided by two plus four and then a parentheses, because that parentheses represents the numerator divided by, where was it, four. And now you'll notice that if you've got a nice value, a nice enough value that over here, you can click this button and that turns your answer from a decimal into a fraction. If you don't get that, like for instance, the sine of pi over four, let me see. Uh, sine of pi over four. Notice that I don't get that for this because you can't turn square root of two over two into a nice fraction like you can here. But if you get that, you can do this. So Desmos does a lot of amazing things, just like all our technology. <laughs>